we've got pictures. Um, I should have brought them up this morning. Uh, pictures where they put that pitched roof on using steel stringers. Um, that could be valuable steel. I'm not sure what the spacing was on it, um, but that's in there and that was not taken into consideration when they gave us the quote on the estimate to take down the building. Uh, as far as anything in the building, uh, beds, uh, whatever is left in the rooms, that could all be taken out. That becomes ours. Uh, and then we open it up for demolition. Okay, so my, my, my question on once, once they are given a proposal and they're moving ahead, do you have another agreement with them that steel and other items no. of value? Because typically that becomes the property of the demolisher, right. and then he subs that stuff out to be sold. Right, right. I think something that could be negotiated is you'll notice that that 14000 was in there, was in case there was, it was an estimate, estimation as to what it would cost to take out the asbestos. I think that might be negotiable, and we might offset that with some of the steel. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, last week you gave us a proposal that was for uh, dated two nine ten for fifty five thousand seven hundred and fifty plus thirteen thousand seven hundred and fifty, and this week we're getting a revised proposal which basically adds um, $30,000 to the whole cost of the project. Mm -hmm. And did you, is there any other company that you used? Did you put this out to bid, or is this the only no, company we have that not, we looked at? No, we have not put it out to bid. It was just basically what we used to tear down the old jail and the old nursing home, uh, always wrecking did that job. They did it for $90,000, which is a really reasonable figure. Uh, they recycle everything. But to answer your question, no, that has not gone out for bid. We can put it out for bid. And we will put it out for bid. These are estimates that came from them. Yes? Um, my recollection is, Mr. Chairman, maybe Mark and Harry, can remember, that I thought you went out for bid when you took the jail down, and this person was so much lower that you gave me the money. I believe that was truly true. Yeah. That's why you did it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I stand. I might stand corrected, but I believe uh, my Representative McConkie uh, actually left the meeting and made a phone call to them to, to check on the price of that. Is that correct? I, I believe so. There, there is a short list of people that work for the state of New Hampshire Department of Transportation and for the state that are licensed and yearly have to go through. Uh, review to make sure that they qualify for all state jobs and and always wrecking is on the top of their list that they use on a regular basis. Very good and very thorough. Does, does that mean that we need to go out to bid because do they already go through the bid process at the state? I know they're certified by the state. And so when they so when they put in a price there's no nothing else. So okay. I'm not saying that he's the lowest, I'm saying yeah, he's, he's highly recommended by the He is certified by the state. It's a family, I understand, it's a family business. Yes, ma'am. Well, my other question is, um, there's a, a, a real lot of uh, kitchen equipment, and I, I don't know why you decided not to bring a lot of that over. Maybe you could tell me. We'd have to have Rob come in to explain what was taken out, what was brought over. So it's, a, it's a lot left over, and I, I would assume mm -hmm. that it's got pretty good value, um, mm -hmm. you know, as far as uh, equipment goes for resale. Yeah. Okay, I believe uh, one of our applicants for the uh, Demolition of the of the uh, reconstruction, the rehabbing of the of the old nursing home. If you'd want to come up uh, up here in the front, appreciate it. And, and how you pronounce oh, another shout? Bowen. Bowen. Okay. Um, 
why don't we uh, have everybody introduce themselves so you know who you're talking okay. with. Uh, we'll start with Representative uh, Flight. Yep. Joe Flight, State Board. Okay. Okay. Uh, Betsy Pan, State Board. Uh, Bob Rickman, I'm a public member. Wendy Scribner, UNH Cooperative Extension Forestry. Yep. Ian Hamilton, UNH Cooperative Extension. Mark McConkey, State Rep. Chip Aldi. Bob Murray, Mountain View Mainness. Lori Pettingale, State Rep. Mike McCarthy, State Rep. Dave Babson, State Rep. Dorothy Sullivan, Commissioner. I'm Dave Sorensen, Commissioner. Yeah. Asha Kenny, Commissioner. Yeah. And you folks? My name is Jeff Parks with Bowie Corporation. I'm uh, Andre Clarence, uh, also from Bowie oh, Corporation. Okay. okay, if you would give us a, a presentation as to what you would, uh, what you can do for us in regards to rehab the building. We've got, everybody has had a copy of your proposal, so they'll have some questions after. Okay. <clears throat> well, good morning, everyone. Uh, we always like to start these presentations with just a little bit about the company. Um, we, uh, we're actually celebrating our 20th year next month. Uh, my partner and I started the uh, company back in 1991. We had both worked for a, a very large corporation with over 300 employees uh, that did uh, both CM and uh, general contracting work. And uh, we decided that we, we just weren't giving our clients the kind of personal touch that, that we wanted to. So we, we started Bowen Corporation and Basically, it's a, a, an eight-person operation we do uh, with pure construction managers. We sub out all of our work. Jeff and I worked together at a previous company as well, and Jeff's been with us for 19 or 20 years, and that's the case with most of our employees. So when we put someone on a project, uh, they're very, very experienced, uh, 25 to 30 years in the business. And, uh, Every one of them, uh, as I say, I've known personally for a long time. So it makes it a kind of a, a, a comfortable feeling for me as an owner to know that whoever I assign to a project is going to treat it the same way as I would. The, uh, the project uh, itself, uh, from what we understand, is, is uh, about a you know, three to 4,000 square foot core building. And uh, there's some question as to whether you're going to demolish all four wings or perhaps leave one or two um, out uh, for other use. Uh, the way we approach a project like this is uh, we assign a project manager and in our company you kind of only get two choices on something like this. So if you don't like me, you could have Jeff. <laughs> but, uh, we would work uh, uh, with you during the initial parts of the project, and you know it's it's a great decision to hire a construction manager early on because you know what we can do is is help you and analyze all the different choices that you might want to make. We can price whether it makes sense to build new or to tear down, or you know what it might cost to keep something in mothballs, uh, not torn down but just minimally maintained. Have you selected an architect yet? No. So, you know, we start off with a project manager in place, uh, and uh, we would develop a, uh, a spreadsheet line item budget on all the different components. Uh, if you haven't uh, selected an architect yet, uh, we would uh, help uh, generate a request for uh, services for the architect. and. Uh, help you in interviewing them. And uh, I know uh, you've been working with EGA on uh, the uh, new nursing home project. We're actually doing a, an addition to a nursing home with them as well. A great outfit. Uh, but, uh, you know, we would go through helping you select the architect. The architect would come, of course, with a, a team of structural engineer and mechanical electrical engineer, things like that, as part of their proposal. Um, we go through that process with you, select the architect, and at that point, uh, begin um, generating 
um, estimates based on drawings and, and information that they produced as well. Is there any criteria from the UNH cooperative about design, what goes in, that type of thing at this point? Yes. Or will, or will there be? Yeah. Yes, we have it. What we did was we did hire an architect to give us a quick overview of what park extension would need and the layout. Yeah. We have that and we provide that to you. But is this something that UNH has to, whatever happens, UNH would have to approve? No. No, it's not so it's, it's this group so or, or us, yeah. Okay. Roughly, roughly 3,000 square feet, I believe. I will say UNH cooperative extension. UNH will make sure that it is. it has to be ADA. Yes. Yeah, I know we've, we've done a project at UNH. And I'd like to obviously look things over and make sure it's yeah. compatible with their needs. So continuing uh, as the architects on board, the uh, budgets get developed. And, you know, we, we, we're not that familiar with the project yet, so we would need to have a series of meetings with all end users and uh, along with the architect get the input on, you know, what things you're considering. And then uh, the architect would prepare options which we would price and, you know, we'd have continuous meetings uh, to help uh, the delegation understand exactly what uh, they, they ultimately want to spend money on. And, uh, you know, one of the first questions we kind of, you know, try to get a sense for is what your desired budget is if you have one, you know, do you have are you limited on how much you can spend, uh, or? We're always limited. <laughs> True. <laughs> but, you know, we, in the past experience, it's, it's very important to get a kind of a pulse if, if the delegation in general says, you know, we don't want this project to exceed half a million, one million, whatever. Uh, that's a very important kind of marching order when you begin developing a project. Uh, you know, one of the things that our job is to, to, to help keep an architect uh, you know, have an understanding of how fancy things can get, how much money can get spent, and, and you know, it's, it, it can be a, a waste of, of uh, time and, and money to uh, turn <coughs> someone loose without understanding how much you really feel comfortable. I know in municipal projects, uh, that's one of the first things we try to get the select boards together is tell us, tell us where your limits are, what can you sell to the voters, because if you, if you get ahead of yourself with that, uh, it can be a, a real negative. Uh, Bob gave us a tour last week, and it seems like your core the mechanical system is, is updated and running fine, so it seems like that expense doesn't have to be mm -hmm. sought. You, know, you can just change things around. Same thing, I believe, with the fire alarm and also the sprinkler system. So that, that major expense, you don't have to go through other than rearranging some piping, some zoning, and that's it. I, I could be wrong. I thought the fire alarm uh, system had to be revamped. Uh, I, Code-wise, I believe it's up to date, okay. but, but as far as, you still have to revamp it, but it's, you don't have to put a new box in or anything like that. It seems like it's up to date. We have okay. an electrician look at it. Think, but, yeah. okay. So as, as we go through the process, we would uh, ultimately uh, present a, uh, a guaranteed price uh, to the delegation to approve. And, and if so, uh, you know, we normally set up a contract where if, if hired, we have a a preliminary uh, construction management services contract and then that receives an addendum at the end that's tied into the final drawings and that uh, includes a guaranteed maximum price and um, that's what we ultimately go to con construction with. Uh, so preliminarily also if, uh, if you have uh, the need to go to any uh, types of meetings you know we would uh, attend those meetings with you to help uh, uh, with selling a project or, or providing uh, technical information uh, when you're presenting to voters or, or different groups and things like that. And um, if there's uh, any, uh, as far as uh, code uh, reviews, we would do that with the architect. And uh, I don't think there's going to be any permitting issues here because uh, there's no new construction required, but if that were a case, we would be involved in helping to obtain any permits. And of course, uh, building permits for the town would be um, applied for by us as well. Uh, once construction is started, we, uh, 
with assign the job site and super, job site superintendent to uh, 